Hello, my name is Lindsay. I'm a 19-year-old female living in Pennsylvania with my parents and two of my sisters. We live in a rural area, and there isn't much that goes on out here. I listen to your stories every single morning at work and always wish I had a scary story of my own to share. Well, tonight, I got my own frightening tale. To preface the story a bit, my older sister and I have been hiking once before this experience, so we are not pros by any means. However, we always bring some safety items such as pocket knives, flashlights, and a medical kit. For this story, I will not be using my sister's names for their anonymity. My older sister will be called Mary, and my younger sister will be referred to as Farica. So it was Farica's birthday, and she has never really been hiking. So we figured we would bring her on a little hiking trip to take advantage of the beautiful weather. The area we walked at prior is part of the state game lands. Hikers are permitted on the mountain trails during the off-season of hunting. However, not many folks know about this spot because there are no signs or anything until you walk the mile or so into the woods. By then, you reach a small parking lot of sorts that's usually empty. There are two main trails with the occasional blue dot on a nearby tree. If not for these spray paint dots to mark the path, you might not ever know that this was a trail because of how little use it really gets. Probably not the best first hiking spot for a couple of newbies like us. I know. It's super close to us and makes for a quiet hike with lots of scenery. So we decided to hike that trail again because we were somewhat familiar with it. We were excited and ready to have a nice relaxing walk through the mountain and hopefully get some cool pictures. We started walking from our house to the bottom of the hill, where we would begin our hike. On our way there, we were telling Farica about the trail and how beautiful it was. Mary then expresses concern that there could be animals of all sorts nearby because not many people live in this area. It's usually a site where animals would be, of course. It is woods, after all. Still, I never imagined anything like what I'm about to describe would happen. After walking for about 15 minutes or so, we reach the parking lot. Mary leads the way, with me in the middle and Farica following closely behind. The first few steps onto the trail require walking up a small but steep hill. Mary crested the hill before Farica and me, and as she did, we heard a loud rustling noise to our left. I naturally chalked the noise up to some birds or maybe a squirrel messing around in the trees. But then, Mary suddenly stopped in her tracks, causing Farica and me to pause briefly. Just as I was about to ask her what the problem was, Mary calmly said, Turn around, guys. Farica and I looked at her, confused and not understanding what she meant. I started asking why and she said probably the scariest thing I have ever heard. There is something over there. Run. Now, that sentence was a lot more difficult for Farica and me because we know Mary very well and she doesn't scare easily. So to hear the apparent panic in her voice as she ordered us to run away from something that neither Farica nor I saw was terrifying. Mary and Farica immediately started sprinting back down the small hill as I was still standing in my place. I quickly looked behind me but I didn't see anything. I did hear something, though. I was still baffled because I had not seen anything and Mary never said what she saw. I ran over to Mary and Farica, who were waiting for me just before the entrance to the parking lot. I think part of the reason I hesitated to run right away was because I thought Mary might have been exaggerating a little. I should have known by the look on her face that she was not messing around. I had a miniature hatchet multi-tool and pocket knife on my belt, and you better believe I had them at the ready. I had no idea what I was expecting, but I knew whatever might run out of the woods behind us would get a face full of stainless steel. When I reached my sister's, I asked Mary where we were running from. She told us to keep moving as she constantly looked back at the trail that we had just come from. She even told us to jog just in case it followed us. We did. After flying a quarter mile, Mary finally told us that Mary finally told us what we were running from. She said she looked in the direction of the noise we had all heard and saw a huge gray figure hunched over about 10 feet off the trail. She described it to be at least the height of Farica around 5'6". It had long, gray, patchy looking hair and or fur. She said it looked bipedal, but she didn't stick around long enough to take in every detail about the figure. However, 
She did note that it looked like it was shuffling toward us. I believe that made her get us out of there so fast. She must have feared that we were going to be chased. I have never believed in monsters or cryptid, but Mary said she honestly has no idea what that thing was. We don't have any animals in Pennsylvania that match that description, at least as far as I know. I know that black bears sometimes stand on their hind legs, but they are not gray, and it didn't sound big enough to be a bear. The only other thing it might have been was maybe a human, but why would someone be dressed like that, and why would they hear us distressed and not call out to us and let them know that they were not a threat? Maybe someone was doing drugs and was scared they would be busted. I don't know. I swear I've gone through every scenario. I don't know if I believe in Bigfoot or anything like that, but who knows? When we were almost home, Mary told us that she used to go to the bus stop with two of the neighbor kids years ago. She said that they would always walk and they would hear this mysterious animal. Sometimes they would see it walking around the woods near their house, which is very close to the state game lands. They described it the same way and said that it definitely looks like it's some sort of ape creature. At first, she did not believe them because she had never seen such a thing herself. But once, when the neighbor kid's grandmother was with them at the bus stop, Mary asked about this mysterious animal. The grandmother has always been religious and didn't seem to be the type to believe in something like these Bigfoots. But to Mary's surprise, the grandmother said she also had witnessed the mysterious animal lurking around. Moreover, our house is just across the lawn from where our neighbors claim to spot this unknown Bigfoot creature. I'm not sure if these two experiences are related. Besides, that was many, many years ago. But could the figure Mary encountered in the woods tonight be the mysterious? But could the figure Mary encountered in the woods tonight be the mystery animal they saw all those years ago? Maybe it was a human or an animal. Who knows for sure? But what I do know is, I don't think I'll ever be hiking on the state game lands anytime soon. When I was 21 years old, I decided to go out with a bunch of friends in the woods. We decided to hang out after dark. Now we all had booze and flashlights. Two of us had guns and I had my knife. The walk was long through the woods to get to a cliff with a beautiful view to see the sunset. And we were going to drink and get high. Nothing too major, just some weed. We got to the spot with no problem. And at the top of this cliff, there was a big rock you could stand behind, and nobody would see you. So we sat on the cliff, our backs to the rock, and the forest behind the rock. We have a friend, let's call him Jeff. He got up and said that he had to take a pee. We told them to be careful, as it was getting dark, and there were cougars and bears in the woods. So I told them to hurry up and be quick, and if anything happened, scream. So, he went behind the rock and we could hear him start to do his business. We were all just sitting there smoking and drinking, when suddenly we heard this loud, almost ear-piercing screech. We all thought it was a mountain lion, so we went to check on Jeff. He was standing there with his pants down around his ankles, this bewildered look on his face, and he had looked white as a ghost. It was almost like he had seen one. We were looking around and we noticed this vast, gaping hole in the forest where we could hear something running away. This hole was easily seven or eight feet tall, and about three or four people across. It was enormous. There was no way a bear or a cougar could have made a hole like that, and the sounds of the thing running away almost sounded like a Bigfoot or something. It was so heavy and forceful. Interestingly enough, in the area where I lived, we have tales of something called the Mogollon Monster, which is like a Bigfoot in a sense. This creature is seven or eight feet tall and very big, and no one has ever gotten a good look or picture of it. We don't know what happened to that night as Jeff refuses to talk about it, and we don't know what he saw. Some of us chased after it. It was running so freaking fast. It was much quicker than us, and we were gunning it. It got away because we didn't know what it was, what happened, or what Jeff saw. We can only assume that something else was out there that night and it scared the bejesus out of us.
Hello, my name is Clara. I've been a big fan of the show for quite some time. I live in the upper state of Michigan, and I love to hike and camp along with some hunting. I went out one day with my stepdad to go hunting so we could catch some deer and whatnot. Once we got out to where we were hunting, we packed up the gear we had brought from our house. I smelled something foul, like a pile of garbage or rotting fish mixed with some lousy body odor. We ignored it as we thought it was something dead lying nearby. We made our way through the woods onto a beaten down path that we had found. Once we got quite a ways down it, we stopped and took a couple of minutes to take a break. We heard a massive crack in the background behind some large bushes, like something had broken a big branch. My stepdad instinctively grabbed his sidearm from his holster, which is when whatever it was growled at us and sped off. Whatever it was, it sounded big and very quick. We ignored it and hiked even faster to where we needed to go. Once we got there, we set up camp and started to make lunch. We had a hot dog and a side of salad. As we ate, I began to smell that putrid smell again, almost making me vomit my food. I had to pee, so I went off. With it being near dusk, I grabbed a flashlight and a hunting knife that I had brought with me. I squatted down as I was about to take a pee until I saw something move in the distance. I shined my flashlight at whatever was moving. I could see orange or red glowing eyes shining as I became frightened. I pulled my pants back up and ran back to the camp. I told my dad what had happened and he went to check it out. After a couple of minutes, I heard a scream in the direction my dad had walked off. He ran back panicking. He had blood oozing down his knee. I asked him what had happened, but he stayed in silent mode. He packed our stuff as fast as possible and walked quickly back to the truck. Once we got halfway there, we heard a loud call from something that I had never heard before. At that moment, we started running as fast as we could, nearly tripping over roots and rocks until after a couple of minutes or so, we finally made it back to our truck, packed everything in the back, and sped out of there like a bat out of hell. We came home and went to sleep, but before that, I saw his knee, and it looked like a big rock had hit it. We take our two dogs outside to their kennel so they can get out of the house for a while and run and play. These are not small dogs. One is a black lab husky mix and the other is a full-blooded Staffordshire Terrier or a pit bull. The kennels are placed at the edge of the yard near the woods. These woods are oversized, large enough to take a day to go hiking through them. Lately, when it gets dark, the dogs seem on edge. They will bark and whine toward the house to come in. At first, I thought they just wanted to get back into the house, but now I think they're actually scared. Three nights ago, when I went to get them, it was already pretty dark, but we have a security light, so it's not like it's pitch black or anything. I got to the front of the first kennel and noticed both dogs were absolutely silent. They constantly bark at me excitedly when I go to them, but they are dead silent this time. This weirded me out a little, but not to the point of being scared. I will admit that there was a certain uneasiness in the air though, something I can't quite explain, but it's sort of like an electric feeling, like I was about to be shocked. The longer I was there, the more uneasy I felt. I started getting out the first dog, the lab, and heard a heavy snap in the woods near the kennels. I froze. The dogs froze. By this time, I was so on edge that if someone had spoken, I would have jumped, screamed, and possibly ran for my entire life. The creepy feeling in the air just kept getting thicker. The lab had put her bushy tail stuffed underneath her and was whining. This didn't make me feel any better. The pit bull was as far away from the woods as she could be, whimpering for me to come get her. I can only take one dog in at a time because they get too excited and sometimes try to fight, so I avoid that at all costs. I felt so bad leaving the pity there by herself, but I had to do it. As I walked away, she barked this high-pitched whining type of bark at me that I had never heard her do before. The lab could not get to the house quick enough. I went back for the other one and dreaded every step as her door was to the base of the woods. I would have to turn my back to the woods to open her door and get her out. 
As I approached the kennel, the air felt heavy and stale, with an unpleasant smell like a dead skunk. Another snap and I was ready to run for it, but I didn't want to leave my dog, who had her head defensively facing the woods. I could barely make it. It felt like trying to walk through water. I was terrified by the time I reached the door. I heard heavy breathing behind me as I got my dog out. She was scared, but started growling behind me. I was frozen in place. The breathing continued for at least a minute before I heard steps coming toward us. We both took off at the same time. A terrifying scream came from the base of the woods. I didn't dare look back. I just ran. My pity pulled me back to the house. I got in, flipped off all the lights, and stared out the window at the woods. I could see something moving slightly, but just out of my sight. It moved back and forth about five times, then disappeared. It took me forever to fall asleep because I was so scared that every little noise freaked me the heck out. The next night I went to get the dogs earlier. Right around dusk, I thought all was good until I was getting my pity out. A very loud snapping sound rang out as a tree branch had just been snapped in half. It sounded far away, so I hurriedly got my dog and started walking toward the house. A few steps from the kennel I heard something big that started charging toward me from inside the woods. We ran again which appeared to follow for so long, then retreat. Now, every night since then I hear sounds coming out of the woods like branches breaking and being thrown around, knocking on trees and roaring. I am terrified. I no longer take my dogs down there. I take them for walks instead during the day and make sure we are all in before dusk. I don't know what to do. I'm thinking about buying a gun, but I'm not sure it will help. This story takes place during my first year being on the force. I was 19 years old at the time and I was stationed at another community called Waswanipi. Waswanipi is in a swampy area and it was a summer night. We got a call from a bar roughly about 30 minutes away from us. The bar is on the side of a road in a not so great area of this town. To keep the lives of the people who live in this small town normal, I won't name it. So it was my partner and I who responded to the call and drove for about 15 to 20 minutes. I was the one driving the car and had headlights on, the high beams. As we were going, we spotted something lying in the middle of the road. And this thing was big. At first, I thought it was a moose. It's not uncommon for moose to lay on the road because of the heat and mosquitoes. They tend to lay on the road and try to cool off. I started breaking the car down so hard that the tires screeched and whatever was lying there got up quickly. This thing was towering over the car. We are usually equipped with Tahoes and Suburbans. These are big SUVs, and I'm not sure if these... and I'm not sure if it was because of our lights. Still, it looked like this thing had red eyes looking down at us. I've never felt so scared when I saw its eyes, but the thing roared at us and ran away, which was far too fast to be any normal creature. My partner was paralyzed with fear when I was telling him to call backup, so I had to call it in myself, and I remember trying to explain to dispatch what we encountered without sounding crazy. Still, after about 15 minutes or so, our backup finally arrived. We checked out where the thing ran to, and honestly, even with the backup, I didn't feel safe at all because this thing was huge. We had Glocks, and pistols don't do shit to these things. Now you can imagine how I felt with this gun, knowing that this guy couldn't bring down a bear on its own, and this thing was much more significant than a bear and a moose. We walked a couple of meters away to investigate what we encountered. After a few meters, we saw this thing knocking down trees. We decided to walk back to our cars. You could tell every single one of us was shaken up. I swear walking back to the cars I heard knocking on the trees. After returning to the cars, I thought to myself if we had continued following the trail this thing was leaving behind, what would have happened to us if we re-encountered it? A few days later, people reported seeing it from Waswanipi to Senatair. In conclusion, I firmly believe I saw a Bigfoot that night. Quick side story. When I was younger, I stayed with my grandparents and my grandfather had a friend who came over to visit us. He told me a folktale or a myth, whatever you would like to call it. 
He said that Bigfoots were common before the colonial days and would attack native camps and take children. But apparently, every native tribe would come together and have war with the Bigfoots, and they kept it a secret when the colonizers came. That's why there are fewer sightings. I'm not sure if he was telling me the truth or lying to scare me, but it kind of makes sense. Well, the occasional sightings part. That's just me. I was 27 years old and working at a Boy Scout camp far up in the woods of northernly Northern California. Where I worked had a large population of black bears, which for the most part were relatively harmless and easy enough to scare away with a shot from a rifle. However, we had many Boy Scouts at this camp weekly, sometimes as many as 500 heads, and with a lot of vastly spread out campsites, there are going to be a few campers who sleep with candy bears in their pocket and make themselves a prepackaged dinner snack for a bear. I tell you this because black bears love Reese's peanut butter cups. As part of the staff often, I was scheduled for bear watch and strolled the entirety of the camp with a rifle, going from site to site making my presence known to ensure that bears would not come anywhere nearby. On one of these routine nights, everything was more still and quiet than usual and I remember finding it rather odd and unsettling. I had just checked in on the camp the furthest away from all the other campsites. It was a good half mile away from the base proper. As I'm strolling along the trail and the runs beside the lake, I stopped to take a number one and light a joint that I had stashed away for such an occasion of being out by the lake at two in the morning. As human beings, we have natural gut feelings we must always adhere to for survival. There was a gut feeling I had something was amiss. Not only was it unusually still and quiet, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched and was certainly not alone. I nervously took a few puffs from my J and then put it out, now more aware of the unnerving sense in the air. I have been face to face with a bear before. Even a mountain lion has stalked me. I've slept a little too close to the den of a coyote before as well. But this, this was different. I didn't sense that I was in the presence of anything like that. The smell was absolutely overwhelming. It did not smell like any bear I've ever experienced. It was almost sour, but still musky. I'll never forget the smell, but I can never find the words to describe it adequately. As I reached for my flashlight before considering readying my rifle, a massive boom hit the ground falling from the trees above and nearly knocking me on my ass from the sheer force of it. I reached for my flashlight and had fallen to the ground. I reached for my flashlight that had fallen to the ground as I heard something significant, something massive, running away from me into the tree line up into the hill above. Immediately, I considered it probably the biggest bear I had ever come across, and black bears can be spooked rather easily, so I considered myself lucky. But as I lay there, hyperventilating, shaking, and quaking in my boots, I started to feel the sound of the beast running away. It didn't sound like the stride of a black bear in flight. It sounded bipedal. It sounded human. I braced, stood up, and readied my rifle, released the safety, and shot upward toward the lake. It woke up many campers and scout leaders alike. I stood alone for 10 minutes before the camp leader and some other staff came to me. During that time, I had my flashlight out and was inspecting the scene. Whatever it was that had dropped from the branches above fell from possibly 20 feet, and in its wake of running away, had torn off limbs into the hill. Some of these limbs stood more than 13 feet off the ground, and some smaller trees were bent almost down into the ground. I have never seen a bear do that, that's for sure. Everyone was stumped when some of the staff and some concerned campers arrived. Most campers, to comfort themselves, insisted it was just a bear. Uh, I do know this though, no bear running on all fours stands 13 feet tall, and no bear can run on two feet for 12 yards uphill on two legs. They just don't do that. We were all thinking about it, so I'll say it. I think I encountered a Sasquatch that night. If not, I don't know what the heck that thing was, but I'm glad it was running away from me and not at me because whatever that thing was, beast or man, it was gargantuan. 
and I would not have stood a chance if it had decided to confront me. I live on a rural, indigenous reservation in Alberta, Canada. I'm familiar with stories of the Wendigo, shapeshifters, and skimwalkers. But my only encounter will always stick with me, and I vividly remember all the details of my experience. It was spring of 2020. The pandemic was just getting into effect. We were all stuck at home at the time. But one night, around 3 a.m., I went to have a cigarette. I cracked our balcony door and stood inside as it was still chilly outside. The snow was starting to melt. It was a full moon that night. It was so bright outside, and with all the snow, the moonlight reflection made everything merry and vivid. I lit my cigarette and heard what sounded like a chopping sound, almost like stones or something solid being thrown against a tree. The forest is all around my house. I quite literally live in the middle of nowhere. The sound was coming from my neighbor's horse's field. It caught my attention, so I focused on that area. That's when I heard footsteps in the snow. It wasn't like an animal trotting, but more like human footsteps. Gazing off in the distance, I saw something pacing around the vehicles. I thought it was maybe an intruder, somebody trying to rob us, but my gut feeling took over, and I had this eerie, unnatural feeling about this. I will admit, that I was a little bit intoxicated at the time, so I was second guessing that I may have been seeing things, but to be honest, I had only had a few drinks and definitely wasn't drunk or anything like that. But with the moonlight shining down, I knew whatever this thing was had been pacing around, and then it saw me. This thing stands up on two legs and ran when it saw me. It got about 50 meters from where I was standing. This creature lunged at me and made a growl I had never heard before. It all happened so fast, but when it lunged at me, the moonlight showed how greasy this thing's skin was. This creature had long hair. It was jet black with yellow teeth and eyes. It somewhat resembled a wolf, but it was much more significant, and the way it growled was unnatural. The way it lunged at me was supernatural. It, it was almost as if this thing could jump on the roof of a two-story house with ease. And the smell. It smelt like rotting garbage. I have never been so scared in my entire life. It all happened so fast, but I vividly remember this detail. When people use the term my heart dropped, that's a very real thing. I threw my smoke and slammed the door shut. My entire body trembled, and I felt like my heart was going to fall out of my stomach. I was vibrating and shaking and trying to get myself together. I was trying to rationalize my thoughts about what had just happened. I have never been so scared in my entire life. I sat in the living room in darkness. Rethinking about what just happened, I felt like I was being watched the entire time. This was my dad's house and my room was in the basement. There was no way in hell I was going downstairs. I calmed down the best I could and made a bed on the living room couch upstairs. At that point, I was even thinking, maybe I'm just tripping out and seeing things. Then I kept hearing tapping alongside the house. My house is stucco, which almost sounded like nails on a chalkboard. I was scared all over again, frozen in fear. The front door to the house is on the second story, so there's a flight of stairs outside leading to the balcony and front entrance. I heard something run up the staircase and pace around the front porch. We use sage and smudge to ward off evil energy in my culture. However, me being slightly intoxicated at the time, it is frowned upon to use it while under the influence. But this was an emergency. I was scared for my life. So I lit the sage and smudged myself and the entire upstairs of my house. Just as I was starting to feel at ease and even started to second guess myself again. I saw what was definitely making those noises I was hearing outside. And this pain of being watched came back. Then I got towards the front entrance with my smudge pan still burning. As I peered outside, the thing was standing on two legs at the foot of the staircase. And it laughed. It laughed at me. And not a regular laugh, but like a hyena or some weird or mortal animal laugh. At that point, I knew what I experienced was real. 
I ran into my dad's room where he was sleeping and shook him awake. I was in complete darkness. I was crying and my voice was shaking. I was shaking uncontrollably and I told him everything that happened that night. His response was typical asking how much I drank and if I did any drugs. It made me feel like a crazy person and even a little humiliated. Humiliated. It made me feel like a crazy person and even had me feeling a little humiliated. But the fear I had in my eyes was almost as if he said that to try to bring a reasonable explanation to comfort me. Because he gave me his eagle feather and said, put this under your pillow and pray for protection from our ancestors and to the creator. After doing so, I could finally sleep on the couch upstairs. The following day when I woke up, I once again thought to myself if everything I had experienced was real. I didn't want to believe that the whole experience was indeed authentic. Until I went outside and I saw where the thing had lunged at me in the snow. And where it landed, there were four big paw prints. It wasn't regular paw prints like a dog or a wolf would have left. These things had claw marks and they almost looked human. It was massive too. It was almost twice the size of my hand. I just looked at those prints for a good while. My heart stopped and my body became heated as if I was about to faint. I was too scared to even show my dad or take a picture because I didn't want to make notes or document pictures because I was scared doing so would make it return. My only reaction was to cover up the tracks and place protection around my yard. I got utterly sober after that experience. Thankfully, I've never had an encounter like that again. And the way my dad reacted when I woke him and told him what happened, I never told anybody else about this experience because I didn't want to sound crazy. But I saw those prints. They were real. It all happened. I even have goosebumps writing this story. I hope you feature this story, Swamp Dweller. I've been a long time subscriber and have finally dared to share my story with what I believe was a skimwalker. Keep up the excellent work. Hello, my name is Daniel, and I've been deciding whether or not I should share my encounter with your show for quite some time. I believe what I experienced were multiple skinwalkers, so please enjoy because this is going to be a long story but a good one, and I promise you it's true. So, one day about two months ago, my friends and I were talking about cryptids and trying to hunt one down and get it on camera. So, one of my friend's brothers, whom I will call Chris, decided to plan a trip into the field. So, I told him we could go hunting for whatever we would see in the dark with a flashlight and a GoPro. So fast forward two days, I get to his house, and we smoke a little Mary J before heading out to our journey. So we get to the field, right down the road, and it just so happens to be the spot where I feel creeped out when I'm alone, riding my bike home. So we get out our flashlights, and we go to the middle of the field by the wood line, and I told him that if we were going to get anything on camera, our best bet would be to go into the woods. So we walk further down and go into a brush of thorns and trees. So we pick a spot to sit and wait for something to happen. After around 10 minutes or so, we had heard nothing until a random and unexplainable noise that honestly would sound like something running bipedally started to happen by the tree line. Then, two more minutes go by, and we hear what sounded like an enormous bird flapping its wings above the trees. What the hell is that? I asked Chris. But before he could say anything, it sounded like a crowd of 20 deer running by the tree line simultaneously. So Chris looked back at me, and I said, screw that bro, we have to get out of here. I know, so much for being a cryptid hunter. So we got up after the noises stopped and we walked a couple of feet. My heart dropped because I heard what sounded like a massive tree breaking not even 15 feet from where we stood. I told my friend that we have to go now and then darted through the brush and out of the woods through the field. This is when I got my first glimpse of what looked like four glowing orange eyes in the trees. And so, we then walked because my friend told me that we should act like we didn't see anything. But then I got the bright idea to look back from where we had came from. And I saw what I only thought was an old lady in a white dress standing in the spot that we were standing. As we were walking down to the end of the street, I finally told Chris what I had saw and said, Did you see it too? To my surprise, he said yes, and we kept on walking. As I looked back, this time... Whatever that thing I saw in the white dress was running at us in full sprint, but now, it was not a woman. 
It was clearly some sort of bipedal creature that I can't even begin to explain. That I can't even begin to explain. We ran like hell back to our house, shut the door, and hoped that thing wouldn't come in the house because we locked everything. One of the deadbolts, though, were broken at the time, and we were waiting for a repairman to come fix it. We tried to avoid going into the woods after that event, and honestly, I've been pretty good about avoiding them, especially at night. I don't honestly know if this was a skimwalker or a group of them or whatnot, but those glowing eyes from the woods, petrifying, orange, and downright menacing. I don't know how to explain it other than the stories that I've heard from this channel based on skimwalkers. I'm not the type to believe in this stuff, mainly because I'm not very superstitious. But these two encounters made me doubt whatever was going down on my farm. The first encounter occurred when two friends and I were having dinner. Everything was calm. We ate outside since this was a relatively ample space. That was until we heard a woman scream, which was extremely odd since the country I live in is very calm, with very few criminals, or even animal attacks. Since we were in the wilderness, I found that to be relevant. I was the first one to react. I climbed to the wall separating the house grounds from the animals. From there, I could see almost all of the houses near mine. My friends got up right after me. We stayed in total silence, waiting for another scream, and we heard it. This time we could understand what was said. It was a very high-pitched, Help! She yelled this multiple times and then a bunch of gibberish no one could understand. One of my friends quickly grabbed the phone to call the police. As we assumed it would be some sort of domestic violence or robbery, I held my axe and my other friend followed me to the gate. We didn't leave because nobody knew what we would find, since something sounded odd about those screams and not quite right. Right before the police arrived, we heard a thud and glass breaking. I assume it was a window. The scream stopped as soon as the police arrived, never to be heard again. The police found nothing of note. Later that night, my friends and I stayed up chatting about what had happened. One of them was oddly quiet. When I asked him what was wrong, he said, I've heard those screams before. He claimed he had heard that same type of scream before while walking his dog. The next day, we got up and decided to check the house the screams were coming from. But there was one weird thing about it when we arrived at the place. There was no house. It was a forest, just trees upon trees and bushes everywhere. We returned and decided to forget what had happened since it was not a good time and we were trying to have some good vibes. It would take many years for someone to relate this encounter with a skimwalker. I know I didn't at first, but when it happened twice, I started connecting everything. The second encounter happened when my cousins were over. Like the previous night, we had a good, peaceful dinner. That's when my cousin and I decided to go for a little walk in the garden that I had. It was made of the frontier with a vast forest, only separated by a small stone wall. We were walking and talking and laughing and having a good time when I started to hear a man talking. Not in a normal voice, it sounded like there was something in his throat that produced a weird frequency. Again, I grabbed my axe and called my cousin and his sister. We got near the wall to hear what he was saying. Like the first encounter, we could only understand gibberish coming from him, and it just wouldn't stop talking. It kept going on and on and on, not even taking breaks to catch their breath. After listening to it, we realized we couldn't do anything about it, so we left and finished our dinner. They go home, and I find myself alone here. It was unsettling, and then I start overthinking more and more, and I remember the times my dog would spend entire nights barking at the forest when all the existing animals were wiped out by hunters. I remember the warnings my parents gave me when I was a child. Always leave the forest and lock the doors before sunset. Regardless of my questions, they would never tell me why because, as I mentioned before, it was a quiet little location in a peaceful country. I couldn't understand why so many worries were to be had. But this all ended when the loggers came to cut down all the grown trees, 
leaving the forest visible. Before the trees were cut down, you couldn't see anything in there, even during the daytime. After they cut the trees and the excellent weather came, nothing weird happened, and my dog stopped barking at the wall. I would like to know if I was being paranoid, or if I really was potentially having encounters with a skimwalker, or something similar. I've always been interested in the paranormal and unexplained since I was a young kid after having an experience what I believed to be a black eye kid. But that's another story for another day. This story took place when I was 15 or so in Middle Tennessee. Back then, I was going through my edgy phase, as we all do, and I thought it was cool to go into the woods alone and blow off steam and whatnot. I spent a lot of time with my grandma as my dad worked six days a week and didn't feel comfortable leaving me home alone, since we lived in a sort of sketchy meth head town, whereas my grandma lived in a relatively more peaceful area out in the boonies, if you would. She owns a suitable few acres of land, and if you go far enough into the woods, this beautiful waterfall leads to an underground spring. One day I was going back there, trekking the land I knew like the back of my hand at that point enjoying the peacefulness the wilderness had to offer. After going uphill for some time, when it starts going downhill, there's this clearing that will take you straight to the waterfall. Watching my feet as I walked, always cautious not to step on a copperhead, I came to the hill to the clearing. Right at the bottom of the mountain, something unusual caught my eye. It took a second to realize what I was staring at, but it was the skeleton of a deer, freshly killed. Now, I usually wouldn't overthink this, but something felt off about this. There was no rotted skin or signs of flesh anywhere. These bones still had fresh blood, but no sign of skin or anything. My young teenage mind tried to process this, but I couldn't think of any predator that lived in this area that would strip a deer like this, and no hunter would dump the bones in this area because this was not an area where hunters were known to hunt. The moment I realized this was all wrong, a sense of impending doom washed over me. My fight or flight kicked in. It felt like the trees and ground all around me, and even above me, were moving, shaking like something was coming towards me. I took off as quickly as I could, not even looking behind me, but I could sense that something there was chasing after me. I heard the twigs and sticks break under the weight of something behind me, running fast after me. I don't think I have ever ran that fast in my life. Once I was out of the clearing of the woods and back in my grandma's backyard, the feeling of safety washed over me. I don't know what was in those woods that day, but I didn't hike back there alone ever again. After reading stories and hearing a bunch of episodes on the Swamp Dweller channel, I really do think this might fit the Skinwalker category, but I would love to know if anybody in the comment section has another idea. This is a story my friend shared with me recently. Apparently this happened to him around last Halloween. I'm a security guard stationed at a gigantic shopping mall with a few other security guards. I went off to my area while the others went to theirs. I started to do my rounds going into shops at around the central part of the mall. It was getting close to Halloween so the mall was relatively packed. Then that's when I noticed the cloaked figure coming towards me smoothly it bumped into me as it passes me. I felt the feeling us security guards never really feel. Fear and evil. I made a call out to it to see if it would respond. Hey, you, stop there, I yelled. Nothing. Nothing in return. It was like it didn't even acknowledge that I was there. So I followed it to see where it was going. It stopped and turned slightly to see if it was being followed. Then it continued going, but the pursuit was cut short by an elderly Asian man falling down in a shop as the nice guy I am, I had to go help them. I turned back to where the cloaked figure was, but it wasn't there anymore, like it vanished in thin air. I went to go have my break when I was about to walk through the door, I ran into Rex, my friend. Hey, did you happen to see some sort of cloaked figure walking around? I said. Rex went white and said, yeah and this time it was looking at me. 
We both sat down and never brought up the cloaked figure again. We don't know if it was a person in a costume or a member of some unknown cult, so I ate my lunch and headed back out. Later that afternoon, as it turned into night, the people started to get thin and the shop started to close. When it was dead as a doornail, my night shift began. I hopped on my cart, fired up the belt driver, and started doing my rounds on the bottom floor. It was pitch black only until the spotlight on the cart lit up a bit. The darkness isn't the only thing I should be worrying about. That cloaked figure is probably still around the mall somewhere. Then I heard a sound, like something was laughing. But it wasn't a normal laugh, it was distorted, childlike laughter. It went off in several places around me. It was taunting me like little kids do to adults. But the mall was closed, meaning there was no one here. Wh who's there? I yelled. The laughing stopped, and the mall fell silent again. Then suddenly there was a loud bang from the second floor that scared me. So I headed to the escalator, went up to the second floor. As I rounded the corner, I noticed the vending machine walking down and saw some black mass next to it. I shone my light on it, and I noticed it was the rear end of a grizzly bear, a gigantic grizzly bear bigger than any I have ever seen. The thing froze as the light hit it, and it slowly turned to face me. The front of the gigantic creature was that of a bobcat with glowing red eyes and long fangs, and the back was that of a bear. The creature rose on its hind legs, making it about seven to eight feet tall. It held its bobcat paws in the air out to balance its body. I could feel its red eyes looking right into my soul. Who's there? It said in a distorted version of my own voice, letting out a god-awful screech after. I was terrified. I jumped into the cart and sped all the way to the entrance and ran outside. I have never seen this thing since that incident, and I have no idea what it was. But after reading many stories, I believe this has to be some sort of skimwalker. I have no other explanation. I know that you get sent tons of stories like this, and this may be anticlimactic, but I have never heard of an animal that looks like the front half is a bobcat and the last half is a bear. And not only that, but it was overgrown to all hell. My Scary Encounter with a Creature in the Woods by JJ Beh 21 At midnight one night, I decided to go outside and hop in my hot tub. As soon as I got outside, I realized it was very silent, and if you know anything about the woods, they are never quiet. I was in my hot tub for around 30 minutes when I heard an animal approaching about 30-ish feet away, right on the other side of my wooden fence. I brush it off as just being a deer, and I continue chilling until I listen to its steps. Then I start thinking that it couldn't be a deer, as the steps were bipedal, and it sounded far too big. I'm talking about three to four hundred pounds hefty, and then I realized that it was hovering around four feet or so. So with one step, and it started sounding bipedal, that's when I started to feel like it wasn't just watching me, it was getting closer. I soon confirmed this when I heard it start walking back the way it came, and then it kept doing this, like it was going back and forth. Remember, this was only about 20 feet away from me, so I could listen to which direction it was going to fairly easily. Anyway, I only had brought my phone with me, so I kept trying to see if I could see it with my flashlight. Of course it was too far away, but all I wanted was to see at least a slight silhouette. As I said I was terrified. So when I couldn't see anything past 8 feet, I just sunk my head into the hot tub to where only my ears and face were out, trying to hide if I could, thinking maybe it would go away. This would only appear to make things much worse on my end as I heard it cross the fence and begin to walk up to the side of my house and towards the hot tub. It came within a couple of feet of me, before it went back to the fence and then started going back and forth with those significant steps once more. At this point, I stood up in the water and tried to see it with my phone flashlight before I heard one of my dogs barks in the mudroom across the house. I then jumped out of the hot tub and sprinted, fearing for my life. As I got inside, I dried off and told my mom, 
who was sitting on the couch that something was watching me outside. I then checked on the two pit bulls and Great Dane in the mudroom and realized they were cowering in the corner, scared of whatever was outside. Keep in mind, these are big dogs, so it takes a lot to frighten them like that. I grabbed a flashlight and a shotgun. I loaded them with slugs and forced my dogs outside. The Great Dane would not leave no matter what, but I managed to get the other two out. Then I heard it again, but this time it was adjacent to the door, walking sideways around 40 to 60 feet uphill. I live in the Rocky Mountains of Montana, so everything is either uphill or downhill. I shine my light to where I hear the thing, but it is behind trees and I can't see much of anything. It keeps going until I go to lock my chicken coop up for the night. I bring both dogs with me and as soon as I start to walk the 80 feet to the pen, one of my dogs runs to the back side of the mud room through the dog door. I bring the last one with me to the chicken coop and as soon as I shut the door I turn back and the dog sprints back to go inside. It ditches me. I lock the chicken coop door as fast as possible and I run faster than I ever have keeping the light on the hill where I heard the creature last. I get inside, lock every door and I stay in the living room all night checking outside every now and then. To this day, I have no clue what that thing was, and I've never had another encounter with it. I have also stopped going outside at night, especially when it is quiet. Life as a Dissident by Dissident Girl The dictionary defines a dissident as a person who opposes the official policy, especially that of authoritarian state. This is a nonconformist point of view typically brought out by disgust in government or how laws are dished out. Thus, this hits problematic, high-risk teen males more than any other peer group. In this way, I am what you would consider an outstanding minority as I was and am a female in the range of teens. This story takes place between the ages of 14 and 19, from five years past to present. I will tell you one story per entry as they are all long. All the details in this story are true, even the parts that may seem made up. There will be plenty as this story is about a paranormal and uncanny experience of a rebellious teenage girl who ran away from her home in Mendocino County one evening in 2017. I will remember this day for the rest of my life. It is the day my life changed forever and carved the path that led to this present day. I had been raised by my aunt and uncle who had always taken any amount to remind me what a burden I was to them and how unfair it was that God had to leave me with them after an accident killed both my mother and father. My aunt Judy was always the worst of the pair, being my mother's older sister who had always been extremely jealous of my mother for her being prettier and in general more popular than her. My uncle Hugh was more like the sniveling dog who always had something to say after my aunt and had sufficiently dug into me. At 14, I had become enough fed up with my life that I plotted my escape. Packing as efficiently as I could, I left a note in my bed, or the mattress that was on the floor, that read, Dear Auntie and Uncle, I no longer wish to remain in your home. You have made no effort to harbor a tolerable relationship with me, so I have no wish to stay where I am unwanted. Please do not follow me or try to find me. You will not know where I am going or whom I am leaving with, as you never have taken part in my life or had any interest. Good riddance. Signed, Clara. They never sent anyone to look for me since I was homeschooled, no one noticed me going missing. I hitched a ride with the passing driver. She was kind and didn't ask questions. I was so weathered I must have looked older than I was. My life of being someone's burden was finally over. Not even a week after I ejected myself from my family's life, I was on the street, living in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. Once the sun fell, not daring to be seen slipping into my little abode during the day, I had fashioned myself a little shelter out of fallen branches plenty within the thick forest that overtook the landscape almost as soon as you stepped into the trail. My little hut was warm, if not slightly snug. Branches used to cut the world's view from me and hopefully protect me from any wandering weirdos. As a weapon, I had a pine branch that was fashioned into a very sharp point in case I ever needed to defend myself. I was and am self-sufficient since I had been preparing for my escape from hell for a year. 
I had help from YouTube on how to make tools and such. The evening was warm and still. The usual chatter of crickets and frogs filling the night air wasn't even apparent. I was in a fretful sleep, rolling over in my little wooden confines, again and again, finally falling asleep at around 11. Despite being asleep, I woke up to dead silence and the average ambience was gone. A terrible, putrid smell hung about the air. Even at this age, I knew silence in the forest was a terrible sign typically signaling that a predator was in the area, a shuffling of heavy hooves nearby that I could not quite make out as a deer. A deer has four hooves and these hefty footfalls sounded like they were bipedal. It almost sounded like whatever was making that noise was injured. The smell was so repulsive that it made me gag. My hand was coming up to cover my mouth to muffle the sounds of my retching. There came a voice from the direction opposite of the heavy hoof beats that had been heard previously. So hungry, I'm sorry, need to feed. The voice was like a raspy whisper, but also demonic. Between every word, the beast took a deep inhale as if to target our prey. I became instantly petrified with fear as I heard this bone chilling creature speak in its nails on the chalkboard voice the light yet spectral tone seeming to speak directly into my ri- the light yet spectral tone seeming to speak directly into my mind rather than from the mysterious creature's body. In the distance, a deep boisterous howl and the other beast seemingly fled, leaving me to sit there in terror for a few hours until daybreak. I never returned to that forest area again. The next day, I managed to drum up enough cash for a bus trip to South Oklahoma. Another story for another day. Thank you for sharing my story. It Spoke to Me by Alex Pierce Hi Swamp Dweller, my name is Alex and I come from Cherokee ancestry. Ever since I was about nine years old, my great-grandfather had told me many stories about the legendary Sasquatch on many occasions in Germansville, Pennsylvania. He would have me and my two brothers sit on a wooden bench he made from eastern hemlock trees in front of a bonfire. He was full Cherokee, and he would talk about how his grandfather shared these stories with him the same way with us. One of the stories he told us was that his grandfather had some connection with these creatures. All I could do was give him all my attention as I never looked away, staring into his big brown eyes. He talked about their nighttime rituals and how they'd get responses from the creatures. He said they would talk to them from a distance and understood every word. While my great-grandfather mentioned a few chanting words, I heard something coming from my right, loud steps crushing the ground leaves. My great-grandfather said, Don't mind that sound, son. This is what they do so ignore it until it starts talking. I apologized quickly for turning my head towards the loud steps. He continued their story about their origins and mentioned that they had been here long since the beginning of time and they had traveled long ways from Alaska to Canada again and he taught us some of the words from his native language. I noticed that the stepping sounds had stopped and it was not far from us. It sounded like it only stopped 20 feet into the woods so I tried my hardest to ignore it as my great-grandfather continued his story. Suddenly, the creature starts to speak. I don't know what it was saying, but it sounded like unknown gibberish. I couldn't help but ask Grandpa if he knew what it was saying, and he said he didn't know. But that's what they do from time to time to communicate with each other. Before I knew it, I heard another one coming from the woods to my left, and it started speaking that same gibberish. I was frozen and scared at this point. I couldn't see anything but knew how close they were to us. My brothers looked at me in fright and begged my grandpa to return to the house. Grandpa told us everything was fine and they would walk away. I couldn't see eye shine or anything like that. I couldn't even get a glimpse of them, but they finally did start walking deeper into the woods after some time. I hope I never have that same experience again in my lifetime. Thanks Swamp Dweller for sharing my story and I hope anybody that hears this doesn't have to get this close to a Sasquatch. NASA is hiding something terrible by R.J. 
NASA is hiding something terrible. This story occurred a few years ago in 2019. I, at the time, was a senior in high school. I live in South Mississippi near the NASA-owned Stennis Space Center. Here, they do test rocket engines for future space travel. Since the rocket engines are known to create a large blast, there are thousands of acres of dense pine forest around the testing area to hold large game such as deer and wild hog. On a seemingly warm and humid night in mid-September, I decided to trespass in the buffer zone to try my luck at bagging a wild hog. I was using an AR-15 with a night scope. Around 11 p.m. I exited from I-10 onto some back roads that took me to more minor logging roads, leading into the buffer zone. I parked my truck outside the buffer zone just a bit and started my two-mile walk into the pines. I found a tree I liked just off the dirt road and set up my overlook over the street, and a large field left over from the logging field. Not even ten minutes into the setup of my tree stand, I see a set of headlights flashing amberly. Shit, I must have set off some motion detection or have been spotted on a trail camera. I held tight in the tree, and the car stopped a few hundred feet away from the road. I can make out the word security on the side of the vehicle through my scope. Two men get out and one sparks up a cigarette. Probably just some kids, I hear one of them say. Wanna look around? The others say. I couldn't help but notice the nighttime noises you usually hear slowly fade away. And both men grew uneasy by the looks of it. And without a word they got back in their car and drove away in a hurry. Huh, <laughs> that was odd. I told myself as I realized that no noises were coming from the surrounding forest, not even the cool breeze that usually flows through the pines. Like clockwork, I hear a deafening howl or a scream. It was a blood-curdling screech that sounded like a crow if it would howl like a wolf. I grew up on the bayou and had Native American blood, so honestly, I've heard many stories of the Rougarou and other folk stories. I've spent plenty of time in the woods and have never heard any noise like it. I'm a big guy now. I'm 6'4", 220 pounds, give or take, not to mention I have an AR-15. But just then, I crapped myself. I quickly dropped down the tree, scraping myself badly and began walking fast to get out of there. Before I exited the clearing, I scanned the field with my night vision scope. And there I saw it, maybe a hundred yards away, staring me down. A sizable, coyote-looking animal. We don't have wolves. So that was out of the picture. But this thing was huge, and it looked almost human in some places. Its hands were spotty with mangy fur. It was patchy with white or gray skin under it. I hauled ass, and I was not going to stay and try to be the badass guy from the movies who hunts and kills the mysterious creature. I ran for maybe 15 minutes until I could see my truck ahead. It was a white truck, so it reflected well in the moonlight. I couldn't help but notice what sounded like another pair of footsteps running with me. I wasn't stopping to try to see what it was, and my goal was to get to my truck and never look back. As I got to my vehicle, I fumbled with my keys because it was an older truck and didn't have a remote unlock. When I got in, I started it and flipped on my light bar. I could see a set of glowing orange eyes staring at me, right in the front of my windshield. I stepped on it and drove 15 minutes to my house where I got home and could not sleep. In the days following, I asked my buddy's dad, who I'm close with, who works as an essential guy over at the Stennis in the security department. He just shrugged it off and almost laughed about it. I have a feeling he knows what it was, and since then I haven't heard any other stories about it. But I have heard other stories about Stennis Space Center, like creepy men dressed in all black suits darting into the forest. Almost like that video that surfaced a few years ago of all those faceless guys in suits on the side of the road. I've heard some similar stories to mine, but nothing exact. Please let me know what you think of these odd encounters. The Strigoi by Purple Hyena My mom has worked at a small, rural hospital for about six years. She is the ER receptionist. She is the first person you see when you come into the emergency room, the one that will give you all the paperwork to fill out and such. Throughout the years that she has worked there, she primarily has worked nights, 7pm to 7am, and has seen quite the cast of characters the town has to offer. Every transient, 
druggy, and local has passed through that lobby at some point, and she has seen each of them at least twice. But one night she encountered something she had never seen before. My mom was quick to get the hang of things in the first year, so she was left alone to work the counter the ER faced the parking lot, so she could see people coming in far, far away, and anticipated their moves. One night at about 2 a.m., she was working on her computer, looked up, and was surprised to see two people standing there, a man and a woman, were just standing there, staring at her, and she stared back. The parking lot was dark, no car in sight, and they just appeared. After a long moment, they entered the lobby and went up to the desk. My mom said the alarm bell started going off in her head and something was just not right. For one thing, they were very tall. The desk my mom sat at was easily mid-chest to an average person. With these people, my mom could see the woman's pelvic bone. They were dressed for hot summer weather because it was the summer. They were also very skinny and my mom emphasized this. They were very dry looking but they didn't look like your typical druggies. The woman stroked her neck with long fingers, saying she had a sore throat. My mom didn't say a word for the first and only time. She just looked at them. A phrase kept repeating in her head, Strigoi. As my mom looked at them, the woman looked at the man, then looked back at my mom, then to the man again, the whole time just smiling and stroking her throat, and said to the man, do you think she will let us through? or should we go somewhere else? My mom stayed silent as the woman repeated the pattern of looks. They both smiled at my mom and left. Almost immediately after, my mom texted me asking if vampires needed permission to enter places like hospitals. I told her that since she was technically the person to say who went back to the ER, they would need her permission. We both knew that Strigoi was a type of Romanian vampire myth that normally we thought wouldn't be really, you know, true but she kept hearing that phrase in her mind. She has never seen that couple again, and we still talk about what happened every so often. It does make me wonder when I hear about stories of black-eyed children and other tales of vampires. What did she see that night? And how close was she to something unreal? First off, I'd like to say that I grew up in rural Tennessee. Hunting and three-wheelers were commonplace, and I stayed in the woods either hunting or playing a real-life army role-playing game. No, it's not just role-playing. I've had seven deployments and I've had my fair share of trauma. I retired in 2012 and had a tan beret. Some will know what I'm referring to. Anyway, this story was kind of two parts. First, my father-in-law got me interested in metal detecting. I know, boring to some. However, having property where a Civil War battlefield and the Trail of Tears went by is extremely neat, and the history right on my property has many secrets there. However, with history comes repercussions at times. March 2020 came and money was tight, so we moved here. The house had to be remodeled and that's a job that is still going on till this day. I went out on part of our 11 acre spot of land that my wife grew up on. She said she heard some weird things around the area and might have even seen something. Being from the country and seeing the things I have, I just dismissed it. I was out doing a little detecting around the property after a strong storm. A few trees were blown over and they say rain will push what's in the ground up. I hid on a spot and I began to dig but was confused after maybe two feet and I hadn't found anything. I continued to dig when I saw a huge, what I assumed to be rock. However, it was a tomahawk. Cool, I thought. I had found a few more items that had to be some sort of Native American made tool. I brought them up and immediately had this weird feeling. That night was our second night there. We had no water because the lines had to be redone. We had bought a small camper for us and our nine terriers. These are the most protective dogs I have ever owned, and I've had quite a few. That night, as we went to bed, my wife and I were talking. Now, she has a master's degree, so she has some common sense. So as we talk, the toilet flushed. I looked at her, and we don't have running water. I hadn't hooked the line up yet or anything. Then suddenly, the faucet came on. At this, I'm up. Water coming out with no water. That doesn't make any sense. 
let's just even say, being an army ranger, this unnerved me. The dogs have lost it, and all nine slept on top of me or against me. The next day, my little guy that always rides and who I protected from the others had a heat stroke and passed. Out of the blue, I'm all emotional because he slept each night on my shoulder. His spot, and now he's gone. That evening, it's a two mile walk away from the driveway to a store. I had loaded 50 pounds in my backpack and walked with it. That night, I'm talking to a friend during my walk and as I returned, I turned on my flashlight and as I made a corner in the trail, I saw something out of the corner of my eye that will forever stay in my memory. It was a hulking creature, kind of looked like the Marlboro Man. It was like a black shadow almost. I double timed it to the camper. I grabbed my AR-15 and I unloaded everything in my backpack. By the time I got back out there though, nothing was there. And that night I noticed in the mirror as I was shaving that there were things drawn. I asked my wife. She froze and thought I had done it, thinking I was messing with her. From that moment on, she'd hear my voice, and I'm not even home. It would sound like something on the outside of the camper was scratching at the windows and on the side panels. Sometimes, you would even see a silhouette through the window blinds. We were very scared, and we didn't know what to do. And knowing that we were on Native American land, we had a Native American medicine man come and bless our camper and give us blessings as well. After that, this thing, creature, whatever, has seemingly left us alone and hasn't followed us anywhere. I don't know if this really counts much as a cryptid encounter, but it was an encounter with something that I can't quite explain that I will never forget. Hello Swamp Dweller, I am an avid outdoorsman in Southwest Ohio. I hunt every species in the state and, and fish for the most available fish species. I went to college in Southeast Ohio near Wayne National Forest. I believe the story I'm about to tell you is from the summer of 2016 sometime in June. My friend and I had just finished our junior year of high school and we were fishing like crazy all summer. Almost every day, all day it seemed. One Saturday afternoon, we decided to try out a state park near our town. Sycamore State Park is about 2,300 acres near Trotwood, Ohio. We left around 6 p.m. and got there around 6.30. As we arrived, we noticed the parking lot was full, with over 30 cars probably already. We looked over at the reservable shelter and saw that there was a wedding reception going on at the time. We congratulated them as the top of the trail went right by the pond and down to the hill. We got down there, started fishing for catfish, and almost immediately got a hit. We lost track of time and noticed it was getting close to 10.30 at night and the park closes at 11. So we packed our gear and the fish we had caught and made our way to the wooded stairs back toward the parking lot. We didn't have a flashlight at the time and my phone was broken, so our only light was the light coming from my friend Samsung. Once we got to the top of the hill, we turned to the bend in the trail right before the shelter, and we noticed the shelter security light was already on. We stopped and looked under the awning to see a large creature bent over the trash can. My friend gasped out loud, enough to make this thing straighten up turn its hips, and slip away into the darkness out of sight. We fast walked back to the car and sped out of there going 70 miles per hour the whole way home. My friend never believed in Sasquatch or anything of the sort, but after that night, I think everybody became a believer. This thing was easily 6 foot, 6 and a half foot tall. It had dark gray fur, and I guess it was a Bigfoot. Last night, I had a lot of strange and stressful dreams, particularly about a woman who was stalking me. I had woken up sometime around 5 in the morning to leave for work, but ended up waking up at 5.30 from my stressful dream. When I rolled over to check my phone for the time, I noticed right away that I saw something staring at me through my window. It was standing slightly away from the door, looking directly at me. My back door to my house has a long, narrow window that you can see out of. At first, I thought my vision was blurry due to me just waking up 
and being slightly stressed, but I just sat there for a couple of minutes, staring straight at this thing. I thought maybe my eyes still weren't fully adjusted, but I, I could see whatever this thing was moving. This thing had white and brown fur, and it looked like it might even be going mangy at the top. I was startled and considered that maybe I was dreaming or having sleep paralysis, but I firmly believed that this just was not the case. I could still think for myself and was questioning absolutely everything. I could still move and talk. I was just frozen with fear. I slowly pulled the blanket over my head and made a small space in between so I could still see the thing. I'm a bit blind, so naturally my vision blurred once I did that. I watched, frozen in fear, for roughly 15 minutes until my alarm went off, and then I decided to investigate. I felt safer because my family and friends would start waking up around the same time as I usually did. There was nobody there and no trace of any human being or any creature around. We have a backyard camera pointing towards the back door where I thought I saw the guy. I asked my mom if she would come check them around the same time I saw the guy and she told me that the only thing on our deck was a fox. The window is very much above ground so there's no way a fox would be able to get up that high for me to see. I do practice my culture. I don't know if maybe that had anything to do with it, but the whole experience confused me. I was very alert the moment I saw the thing on my deck. I could see this thing's face and head move a bit as it stared me down through the window. It felt intimidating, and it almost snapped me out of my sleepiness that I was in. Does anyone know what this could have been? A lot of friends and other natives around the area say it could have been a skimwalker, but I don't want to jump to conclusions. I am 21 years old, turning 22 in July, and living in St. Louis, Missouri. I've watched stories of werewolves, wendigos, and skimwalkers, but for me, this is one encounter that will stick with me for the rest of my days. It was back around a new year of 2021. I was 20 years old at the time, and everyone but myself went to bed because they usually don't stay up for the countdown for New Year's, so I stayed up watching the TV. I got hungry at one point so I made some popcorn and added some white cheddar popcorn powder afterward. I grabbed some Sprite from the refrigerator and waited for the popcorn, but out of the corner of my eye, I saw something flash by. I didn't think much of it at first, only thinking it was my imagination, not knowing that later I would regret not taking it seriously. I sat on the couch with my finished popcorn and soda, watching the TV before the power went out. It was not odd around my subdivision, this happens every now and then. I had to wait roughly 10 minutes before the power would come back on, and that's when I saw something outside on the back deck. Our deck is all wooden, so whatever was out there, I could hear the claws tapping across the boards. I froze, and knowing the window to the deck was next to me, I didn't want to take any chances of being seen by whatever it was. I felt like someone or something was watching me from the window. So I slowly, but very carefully, turned my head to see a big bear-sized dog or wolf-like thing staring right at me. I didn't lock eyes with it in fear that it would see me as some sort of prey. This was no dog. I'm no expert on werewolves, but I'm pretty sure what I saw was a werewolf. I slowly reached over to grab my phone when the werewolf had its face on the window from the deck looking at me with red eyes the ones you would see in an anime with wolves when it's angry or wanting to attack. I stopped frozen in my tracks once again, sweat dripping, and I could feel my heart begin to race. Was I going to be this thing's next meal? I saw this thing's large canine teeth as they looked at me with eyes that wanted to tear me into shreds. This thing began to pant and it almost sounded like it was trying to speak to me. I didn't want to know what this thing had to say even if it could speak. I thought to myself, maybe I could try to blind it and get away, so I took my phone and shined my flashlight directly in its eyes. It looks like this worked because that werewolf thing growled in annoyance and ran off the deck. After a few minutes, I heard another howl from the distance. I never saw that werewolf, dogman, whatever creature again, and I've never told anyone about it until this show.
Hi, Swamp Dweller. I'm from Arizona, and I listen to your podcast after work while finishing homework, and I enjoy these stories. Since I'd hate to see this podcast go, I'd like to share one of my family's cryptid stories with you. Because of this encounter in particular, I usually don't turn down others' experiences immediately and deem them crazy. This encounter happened in the mid-90s in the Sonoran Desert. My grandma, her husband, her daughter, her sister-in-law, and her brother and sister were returning from Yuma, heading to Phoenix. I don't exactly remember why they were traveling. I'm tempted to say they were visiting family, but I could be wrong. One of the reasons I'm mentioning all these people to give this story the credibility it deserves is because they all experienced it. Five people witnessed this. My grandpa was the only person in the car who didn't seem to see the creature. But that was because he was sitting in the shotgun seat and didn't get the right view or angle. It was close to midnight and my great uncle Stephen was driving. Not rushing home, just enjoying the silent drive through the desert like everybody else in the vehicle. This is where things began to get weird though. My deaf, great aunt was looking out the car window into the darkness and then suddenly grabbed my grandma's arm. My grandma was confused when she saw her face. It looked like she had seen a ghost or something. My grandma looked too and saw a figure running alongside the vehicle. She says it must have been around seven feet tall, but that wasn't the scariest feature at all. It was the creature's face. I mean, its eyes were stretched out very large, like Muto's eyes on the 2014 film Godzilla. But even scarier than that was the creature's weird and crooked smile. You could see its sharp teeth as it glared evilly into the window. My great uncle pressed the gas pedal, sending the car roaring to 100 miles per hour down the street. The creature still ran alongside the vehicle, but failed to keep up. The creature still ran alongside the vehicle, but failed to keep up after my uncle pushed over a hundred. My grandpa, who hadn't seen the animal, said, What the hell are you doing? My great uncle turned to him. You didn't see that thing? Though this encounter rocked my family, they don't like to talk about it too much. They didn't start talking about the creature until quite a few years after when one of them decided to bring it up. My great uncle and one of the other family members drew up some sketches of the creature and compared them, revealing the graphics to be nearly identical. Which was weird because they sent the pictures to each other and hadn't seen the other person's picture before. My grandma drew up a sketch for me to see. It looked genuinely evil as the others had described it. Even though they don't like these types of movies, my family watched the movie The Predator because that creature in the film closely resembled the beast they had seen that chilling night. My grandmother remembers watching it and says that that is exactly what she saw. I remember the sketch looking very similar as well. So, my question to the swamp is, what exactly was this creature? I have no idea. My family deemed it a chupacabra since it somewhat corresponds with the chupacabra's profile, but I saw some problems with it. Chupacabras have never been reported this large before in any part of the world that I could find usually topping off at four or five feet and are known to have spikes on their backs, unlike the creature my family encountered, which had somewhat of dreadlocks dangling down the back of its grotesque head. I'd think it's some evil spirit or something concerning Native American witchcraft, like maybe a skimwalker, but I don't think I will ever know. Yet this story sticks with me even till this day, reminding me that my distant Native American heritage is very real. I have a couple of stories to share here, all of them involving my family's cabin in a small town in Wyoming. So, for starters, I need to put this into context. I was born and raised in South Dakota, and if you ever look at a map of it, you will see that it's a great beige rectangle with a singular circle of green right on the west side of the state. That is where I grew up. Now, the west side of South Dakota has some amazing sights and it makes up for there being pretty much nothing to do here. But nothing here holds a candle to the cabin. The cabin is exactly what it sounds like, a log cabin with no running water, a well, and a creek adjacent. The only modern part about it is that it has electricity, and that was added in the 1930s. It is an hour away from my hometown, and if you die up there, there is no chance you will ever be found. So. It is my favorite place to go. 
It was great, and when I was stressed from high school and such, and I wanted to get away, it was exactly where I would go. And now that I am 25, it is still my favorite place to unwind after a long week, but it has its quirks. I'm going to start with the most normal of stories. Not normal because this stuff happens all the time, but because there was no paranormal, extraterrestrial, or ooga booga stuff that I could really lay on for an explanation. I was 13 years old at my sister's birthday party. My sister and I always celebrate our birthdays up there. My dad had to leave to take my sister's friend who could not sleep over back to their home. My mom does not like to spend the night up there, so she left before sun went down. This left 13 year old me with about 5, 10 to 11 year old girls. In short, I was miserable. I was poking at the fire planning on dropping some scary stories on them so that they would have nightmares when I heard a distinct rustling noise coming from the dry creek just ahead of us. I looked up from the fire and saw a figure approaching us. I told my sister to quietly get back to the cabin. She looked at me and was about to say, why? when she saw that my eyes were fixed on some sort of singular point. She followed my gaze and not long after she saw the old bearded man, wide-eyed and stumbling toward us. She screamed, prompting her friends to scream, and they all ran back to the cabin. The screaming stunned me as I was sure that this man would now proceed to kill me after he was done marching to the cabin and then would finish off the girls, but that did not happen. Instead, he stopped and just started mumbling some incoherent nonsense. I could only make out a few words, something about deer, rope, and crick, and some sort of razor blade. Eventually, I gathered up the courage to tell him off. I let him know there were guns in the cabin, and if he did not leave, I would go get one. After I said this, I began to walk towards the cabin and eventually retreated inside of it. We told my dad when he got back what happened and he wasted no time gathering up people from the surrounding community. The old guy was caught, but not by the police. He was caught by his daughter who thanked my dad. I was not there for that part. This guy was just an incredibly old man with dementia who wandered out of his cabin and followed the road to ours, thinking it was one of the cutoffs to the creek. As for the razor blades, well, back in the 1970s, a group of rednecks got tired of city people swimming in their creek. so. One of the rope swings they attached had razor blades on it. A bunch of kids got their hands cut up, and the rednecks were never caught, and all they managed to do was get basically every rope swing cut down and banned from the area. I feel sadder than scared when I remember this. However, this is only the first story I have up there. Now before I go any further, I need you to realize that this place was located on a mountain. It was very remote, as I explained earlier but definitely had something living on the land. When I was a teenager, I used to hang out there with my friends all the time. We'll call them P and S, just for anonymity's sake. So, one day, we were just sitting outside and talking about all the weird stuff that has happened out here and this road that we were on. We were just taking a walk and trying to enjoy ourselves. It just goes straight up into the woods from here. And as we were sitting there just talking, all of us got the worst feeling of dread. This was not normal. It felt like I was being watched from all sides. Just to let you know, we were still close enough to where I lived to be able to see the motion lights and everything else. That's when we noticed out of nowhere, the motion lights had turned on. At first, we thought it might just be one of the animals that live around here, obviously there are dogs that roam and such like that, or maybe it was just one of my family members going outside for a second. So, we decided to make our way back to the house. As we're making our way there though, my friend stops me and tells me that they see something around on the corner of the house. At first, I think they're just seeing stuff because it is kind of dark out. But then, we hear a blood-curdling screech and some sort of garbled noise. It almost sounds like something is trying to yell something, but it also just sounds so inhuman. And then, that's when we noticed a deer. It was standing there, looking at us with these whited out eyes. They looked clouded, 
is the best way I can describe it. This thing was absolutely massive, though. It looked distorted. It looked wrong. It was just like all of the stories I have heard on this channel in the past. It was at that very moment. I knew I was either looking at a skinwalker or a not deer. Now the first thing I did was hold my breath and get ready to tell my friends to run as fast as they could to the front door. We were on a mountain far away from the next town and there was nothing that could come save us if this thing got angry and decided we were its next meal. So we begin sprinting towards the door and it looks like this thing is beelining to cut us off. But strangely, as we are about to intersect and almost run into this thing, it suddenly turns and runs the opposite way, but on two legs, and it's suddenly yelling something that I can't quite make out and decipher, but it sounds like a, a distorted radio, like when you hear a radio just malfunctioning incredibly going through station from station. That's what this thing sounded like. We could hear it bounding through the forest, going up higher into the mountain. I don't know what we experienced that night, but I'm just glad that we got away with our lives. I know for sure, though, that what we encountered must have been a skinwalker, and I have since dubbed that area Skinwalker Mountain.